Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the Christmas beta for Killing Floor 2 and my first impressions of the weapons. So with this new update, we have two HRG weapons and two DLC weapons, as well as one new community map. Uh, well, new community map. It's It was already available if you were on Steam and you could download it. It was a custom map. And so far the map seems fine. I haven't really ran into a whole bunch of invisible walls or anything like that. It seems okay inside. It's not too big. It's not super small. There's some decent places to loop around. There is a lot of choke points that are in some of these maps, so you can get stuck in certain areas. But for the most part, I think the map is okay. Uh, I did also, weirdly enough, find some other tier 1 weapons on the map, at least one. I found a cock and burn, which is not normally findable on most maps, so maybe that's been included too with this update. I don't know, it, I don't think it will really change much, nobody's really excited when they get a cock and burn unless you're playing fire buggy yardy soldiers then it's fine. Maybe they added the grenade pistol too, I'm not sure. So with the new weapons we got, we got one for demo, one for medic, one for sharpshooter, and one for support. First up, I tried the one for medic. This is called the HRG medic missile, and this is modeled after the RPG. This one was kind of disappointing, at least in solo play. I'll have to try it in multiplayer, but my first impressions of this one is not that great. It does at least say that it has good damage on it, as well as it has decent healing. I think it has 50 healing on it, which is pretty high, but uh, this does have the RPG slow rate of fire, so you're not going to be able to shoot this constantly. It does have an arming distance for the missiles as well, I found that out. Otherwise, the missiles just kind of slam into stuff, but they don't seem to slam into them like the RPG kind of does. I, I don't think it counts the same shell type of damage. It says it does 100 damage on hit and then 500 or 400 damage on the explosion. I think most of this is poison damage though, because it wasn't really killing stuff that quickly when I was sending it out. And even the poison damage didn't seem to linger that long, so I wasn't super impressed by this. It does have a back blast though, which does 150 damage, so that's kind of fun. Uh, this was a tier 4 weapon, I think it weighs 7 and it costs 1600 so kind of on the pricier end. So there isn't a whole lot to say about this one, sadly. I was hoping this one would be the coolest, and it it was it was all right. The second weapon that I tried was the other HRG weapon, which is the HRG uh, Ballistic Bouncer. This one is surprisingly good. I don't know why it is, but this one hit insanely hard. I was able to one-shot strikes with this with just a full charged up uh, shot and then I looked at how much damage it did and apparently it does anywhere from 60 to 600. This is based off the Minery Constructor which is a little bit odd that a DLC weapon has an HRG version of it. For some reason this also counts as uh, bludgeoning damage and it bounces around too. You don't seem to be able to hurt yourself with this. It has similar or at least it has a similar fill to the blunderbuss, at least it's cannon shot. And with upgrades, it actually seems to get pretty strong. Apparently when it's fully upgraded, it can go up to 780 damage a shot if you want to fully charge it, which is quite a bit. And uh, it only goes up to seven weight. This is only a tier three weapon that weighs five and only costs 900 dosh. I have a feeling this weapon might get nerfed, maybe. Um, if not, I'm kind of glad that it wouldn't because I think this is going to be one of my favorite weapons. It's a weird, wacky weapon that's actually good, so I'm probably going to enjoy it quite a bit. It holds uh, 18 shots in it, which is pretty good because you can take this with larger magazines if you want to go with support that way. I was using it on Survivalist, I was using the rest of these weapons on Survivalist besides the medic weapon, and this one was surprisingly good. Third weapon that I tried was the HV Storm Cannon. This is Sharpshooter's new DLC weapon, and this is a tier 4 weapon. This one shoots out lightning. It's a semi-auto rifle with one of the craziest looking scopes on it. I think this is the largest, at least in terms of screen size, scope. The, the zoom feels weird on it. It feels okay to hip fire though. This apparently does 150 damage and it counts as EMP damage, which is a little bit weird. It weighs 8, so awkward weight like most of Sharpshooter's weapons. And if you kill something or at least hit something in the head, it seems to arc lightning to other nearby enemies. I don't know how much that lightning does, but it seemed to be okay. Overall, I wasn't super impressed by this weapon either. 150 damage is not that high for a sharpshooter weapon, considering I think one upgrade into the Winchester gets you to like, what, 120 or something? Maybe it's 150. Maybe one upgrade to the Winchester gets you that, and the center fires already starts out as 165, so your tier 1 and tier 2 options are more lightweight and gonna be doing more damage than this which is not great. Sharpshooter has always had such a strange arsenal of weapons and this is just another weird one to give them. So I hope this one gets buffed because using it felt pretty meh, if I'm going to be honest. Didn't feel anything special. 
again, I'm going to have to try these out more and more over time. So maybe my opinion will change, but right now, not way great. And then the last weapon was called the ZMK3. This one is a new demo weapon, and this is a tier 5 weapon costing 2,000 dosh. So it's a very expensive weapon, and it is the most bizarre weapon out of all of them. I saved this for boss wave and tried using it there, and it is really strange. It holds 100 rounds in it. It does 50 damage a shot with its normal shots and 200 damage on explosive shots, which sounds like it could be good. 100 rounds that can explode sounds great, but that's not how it works. You shoot out regular microwave shots that deal 50 damage a piece, and then randomly it will just fire out rockets that will heat seek to nearby enemies. It's not even targeting necessarily the enemy you're aiming at, which is so strange. <laughs> This sounds really cool on paper, but it really feels awful to play with. I, I'm i very disappointed with this weapon. Uh, maybe it'll get better if I play it on demo. Maybe the regular shots work with nukes. I was using this on survivalist and it felt just bad overall. I'm really surprised, especially since last update we had with weapons and stuff. They all felt really, really good. This update has some like hit and misses. Weirdly enough, the, the bouncy ball thing it seems really really fun and really good and everything else feels a little bit mad to me 